Hey, welcome back to the Neon Nightcast podcast, season two. This is episode eight. Uh, we took a little break. Uh, we've just been working on different projects like D&D, uh, Movie Club, which the episode will go up next week, next week. because there was a failure on my part. Whoops, sorry guys. <laughs> um... Yeah, so it's I'm I'm joined with uh, Garrett Zagri and Eric the Doctor Soybean. Always a pleasure. Hello there, friendos. I feel like at this point we uh, might not just could just drop our nicknames. I know, like <laughs> I, I don't I don't call you Thrax, I don't call you Doctor Soybean. Uh yeah. So, anyways, um, I I want to I want to start off by, I think we're just a political podcast now. Uh, but I want to start off with not the... really. I'd call I'd call it like current events, but yeah, anyways. current events because we don't just talk about like stupid. Yeah, political... I mean, I... we do talk about stupid political shit. But so the one thing I want to I want to bring up uh, the only thing that I brought this week. Well, let's talk about it first. Whatever. Um, I'm gonna post the video that I saw it in. Uh, it's a video about first let me let me let me say the title of this video yeah. sjw fails and cringe number 53 sjw in the <laughs> wild because mike <laughs> loves cringe comps love and cringe i was actually watching um sasha barrett cohen's um new who is america yeah and mike you would fucking love it for the cringe yeah i want to watch There's it I really so much cringe it, that. it yeah. is crazy so okay so in this in this part uh it'll be time stamped and whatever uh it's a black woman in a Japanese restaurant with her face. She's in like a Japanese dress or something. I don't know. But her face is half done up in an Asian style of makeup. And because it was a cringe comp, I was like, what's, what side am I, am I cringing with? Because I took more of the side of the Asian woman. Yeah, see, I did too. Because I was confused as well. I was like, I mean, like why are you going around in fucking Asian makeup? And, and she's like, because she made a good point of like, do you, if, is it okay if I just go walk around in blackface? Yeah. And she was trying to be like, Oh, well I have a stream and that makes it okay. And like, my point is like, okay, let's, let's say our podcast gets big and we're doing a panel somewhere and I show up in blackface. Would that be okay? Because I have a podcast to talk about, no, this but, shit? but again, no, of we course have to put fucking it- not. We no, but she's context. black, so she. No, but she's black, so she can't be racist, according to every SGW ever. See, that's the stupidest thing ever. Black people can't be racist. Like everyone's. Everyone's racist. racist. Everyone's racist, at least to some degree. Like I'm racist. I'm racist to some degree. Like I, I'm not like an uber racist, but yeah. Everyone. Something. Everyone has like like stereotypes that. They yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I was trying hard. to get at. Stereotypes. No one's yeah. perfect. There's not a single goddamn. No matter how left how liberal you think you are you you still like you'll see like a black guy in the middle of the night and you'll be fucking scared (laughs) no one's no one's no one's like that um yeah i wouldn't go that far it's just an example i'm I'm not 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 trying to be racist or anything but like i'm not gonna judge people based on anything except like experiences i have with them exactly i'm not gonna like just call like a black person a fucking asshole just because he's black, yeah. like no, exactly. You know, well, I will say if I if I'm that. walking home at night and I see a big group of people, whether they're black or I, anything, I don't care, I move to the other. Are. I move yeah. to the other side. Of, of course, because you never know when some shithead's gonna decide to be a shithead. Okay, that, okay. Yeah. I, I I used a bad example, but I didn't mean that <laughs> literally. I just mean like people have stereotypes. Yeah. Well, I think deep down inside, I think everybody, to a certain degree feels that their race or ethnic group or ash or nationality whichever one you identify most closely with i think everybody deep down feels that theirs is in some way the best you know I- i'll say like if i'm walking down the street in the middle of the night the only time i don't cross the side the, to the other side of the road if it's like a child or a woman but if it's some dude no matter what the fuck they look like i just i just cross because i'm like I only cross if uh, it's so a I group. Cross, yeah, I would only cross if a group. Like, I, I, I'm typically not too uh, cautious about those types of things. Unless it's like a group of old people or something that I don't sure. Care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, until well, that's they like stereotype. Just start old people with their canes. Old people. That's another stereotype. Old people can't be dangerous. <laughs> Why? Well, you, you know, 
I mean, Grandpa was in World War yeah, Two. You could probably kill kill someone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I but feel yeah, like it's but... just the old people have all that life experience, so they're just like, I don't want to take someone's life. They need to experience the same thing I did. But yeah, but like, so like, I really just because it's the cringe video. I I was really confused because I'm like, who who's cringy here? Because I'm pretty sure like. I'm pretty sure I'm on, on the side of the Asian woman. Like yeah, yeah, I think when, 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 when the black chick is like, oh, everyone's too sensitive. It's like, what if she came back into the restaurant in like full on blackface? Do you, you think she would just be like, oh yeah, that's okay. Cause I, I'm in just laughing off. No, I, yeah. I really think she'd be yeah. offended if she saw it. I mean, it depends also what the black woman was doing while she was wearing it. I mean, yeah, she was at a sushi restaurant. She said she was doing it because of, uh, she was appreciating the culture. Yeah. Um, uh, Japanese, I guess, and I mean, again, yeah, but like, that's kind of just a walk fair around. point. Can I go walk around during February wearing like, because February is Black History Month in the U.S. Can I just wear blackface for that entire month and say, "Hey, I'm appreciating your culture"? Yeah, I, I don't think I saw. So. <laughs> it just reminds me of like one of the stupidest videos I've ever fucking seen. It's some black guy who's walking down the street, and an eight, it's like the middle of the night. And an Asian woman crosses the street when she sees him, probably because she's a woman walking alone and it's a man walking alone and it's like midnight. But he starts live streaming himself and he's like, yo, this racist bitch crossed the street when she saw me. So he literally films himself chasing her while making like growling noises. Yeah, that's just fucking scary. Yeah, she's like, scary. Yeah, and you know what? It's, it's like, psycho. yeah, I'm, I'm sure she's not re really going to be afraid of black people after that, you fucking moron. Yeah, that's so fucking stupid. You, you probably would have had a better impact on your race if you just, I don't know, did nothing. Exactly, yeah. Like, what the fuck? But I mean, again, it's not just black people that would do that. It's Oh, we're not, I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm just yeah. using that as a fucking example of human stupidity, I guess. Yeah. Uh, fuck, okay, real quick. There was another part. I might be able to find the thing. Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. But there was... This it was a news, uh, what the fuck is it called? A news broadcast broadcast segment where okay. uh, there was a guy who was there was protesting because a police officer shot someone, and these protesters thought it was really uh, uncalled for. motivated. Uh, yeah, uncalled for or whatever. So they, t they the police invited this leader of this group to come do mock. Uh, scenes and to see if like he would shoot them in these mocks and the guy shot the guy in all three scenarios and then the newscaster did the thing and he only shot someone in one of the scenarios and the, so they're interviewing this guy who's protesting that these cops shot this guy and is oh it's uncalled for and he's really he's just like oh yeah like uh it is really like part of the moment and you know, you really have to take stuff in perspective and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, all like turned around and stuff. And it's like, yeah, like, well, I guess this guy doesn't, has never been in a dangerous situation before. Cause like, that is a lot of the stuff is like these cops are just reacting. And when they think their life is in danger, then they, 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 I, they shouldn't be blamed for it. I mean, but there's, there's certain um, situations where, like, they shoot them in the back while the guy is running away from them. Yeah, that's just fucked up. Yeah, and then again, police officers should have more training in the U.S. In the U.S., you only well, have to go we're... through like three months of training. And then in like the U.K. or something, you have to go through like two and a half years. Like the U.S., like po police officers and law enforcement officers just aren't trained to deal with I f that in my personal opinion. It would have been better if I showed they... you guys the video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, one of the best videos I saw like that was uh, it was some reporter interviewing. It was the guy who was he was chief of police, and I believe it was M Milwaukee. Okay? okay. And they were talking about a press conference where uh, there was an officer there who was under investigation for for shooting someone, and they thought it might not have been necessary. And this reporter gets up on her high horse, and she's like, excuse me, can you tell me why you were looking at your cell phone during the briefing? And he goes, yeah, I'll tell you why. I was uh, being uh, briefed on a three-year-old child being shot in a drive-by. <laughs> okay, but what does that have to do with what we were talking about? 
Well, because they're trying to make she's tr- because she's trying to make it seem like oh like because the guy who got oh, shot by the, the cop the was cop's black. The asshole. She's trying to That's make it, she's, yeah, yeah, she's like, trying to be not like paying oh, attention. You don't even, you don't even care about your, you know, your your subordinate being investigated for killing someone. You're just sitting sitting there browsing on your cell phone, and and he goes off on this long rant. He's like, "No, I was being briefed on a three year old being shot in a drive by." Because like, even and, though I'm still I'm here doing yeah. this, I'm still working. Yeah, and I mean, there's a certain tendency of people to just like act like cops are above the law and never do anything wrong, and obviously that's fucked. And personally. Uh, I think a lot of the punishments that uh, that they get in a lot of cases are way too fucking lenient, and you can find lots of cases where cops abuse their power. Yeah. And I think anybody who's yeah. actually a sensible human being understands that's wrong. Yeah. But this fantasy that people have that every single cop just gets in their car in the morning and looks for black people to arrest and kill for no reason is like total fucking horseshit. And people also need to accept the fact that if we lived in a society without cops, 90% of us would probably have been raped and murdered 20 times over. Oh, yeah. yeah I, so, I wouldn't be alive. So, yeah, like, I feel like it's it's big because you only hear about the cops that are, you know, corrupted. You only, and yeah, you using only hear about powers. bad news. Yeah, so there, there's par- partially that because, yeah, like the majority of cops probably are good, decent people that are just, you know, trying to stay alive each day while doing their job to protect other people. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that a lot of them do get a bad rap because yeah, because whenever apples. people are placed in positions of power, it's they do want to abuse it. So I yeah, which which, no, which and, ironically, they're, they're, which ironically anyone in anyone in power, there's always going to be people against it and that well, is it is natural. Like that was going to happen regardless. There was never ever going to be no complaint about cops because they have a higher power than us. But I think it's just like it's just been getting worse and worse as uh, this whole SJW. Well, isn't that well? I think I think a more poignant thing to point out is that uh, that's essentially the same thing that a lot of that a lot of racists do. You know what I'm saying? Like, they look at the worst examples that they can find to make whatever point that they're making. Like, if they're a racist against black people or if they're or these black racists against white people, you know, they, they find the worst examples of black or white people behavior that they can and be like, look at how fucked up these people are. And it's the same thing that people do with cops. Yeah. It's the same thing that people have a tendency to do with any group that they hate is they seek out the worst examples of their behavior and be like, look at how fucked these people are. Yeah, yeah. they find the worst example and generalize about the entire group. Yeah. And that's just, that's the wrong way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, I think that's, and I think to a certain degree, that's in, that's to a certain degree, that's ingrained in human nature. And it's something that we're all guilty of at times, but it's something you have to recognize and try to, uh, I guess, be aware of, so, and that the only people that I, th- the only people that I try to view as shit, are people who choose to, through their actions and through their ignorance, behave as shit. And people probably like who who have listened to the stream for a while, they're like, "Man, Doctor Soybean, he's really hard on these fucking SJWs." But you know what? They choose to be ignorant and they choose to be shit. Well, they're not yeah, they, born as. I don't think they're born as shit. They, they make the choice to be shit. I've I've spent the last two days, like I'm at fifty three of like these two. Like <laughs> Mike, I've stop. been watching so stop much watching. cringe. And the thing is, is like, yeah, they are super ignorant because they go against the stuff that they even fight for themselves, like free speech and stuff. It's like they're like, oh, well, they want, I need, they want, I need free speech, but they want to get rid of free speech. Well, they want free speech for any of the bullshit they're spouting, but any of the bullshit or any of the any of the bullshit or not bullshit that goes against what they're spouting, that should be banned. Uh, uh, so, disagreeing with them is hate speech. Uh, a lot of that I've seen, it's like, it's like they come to somebody that they don't agree with opinions, one of their talks, and they get up on the mic, and they they're, they're shouting, they're shouting, they're not letting the yeah. guy talk, and then. When he tries to like rebuttal or they try to rebuttal, it's like, oh, I find it interesting that like you don't let me talk and and and, and well, I, that it, actually it just, comes it just drives me mad. It's like it's literally they just want to get on the soapbox and just talk and talk and talk and have everyone all 200 people there listen. 
to them talk. Right. It's not a debate. It's not something they can discuss. It's just supposed to be them lecturing that's, you. And this you is their there feelings nodding. and their and thoughts, and you're not allowed to go against it. Well, that comes from yeah. I know we've the society so and it's so sensitive now. It's like disagreeing with something is seen as like dissent or like if you disagree with someone that's you're, hate you're speech, but, but it actually it, it comes actually from communism. If you're familiar with the concept of a struggle session, it was something they did in in Mao area. Mao era China, which is basically people who were identified as enemies of communism would be subjected to these things called struggle sessions. And what they would do is they would put the person in a circle and basically berate them and psychologically torture them. And it was not a debate. They were not allowed to defend themselves. They're not allowed to uh, argue their point in any way. They're just supposed to sit there and be verbally harassed. Yeah. And if you look at the way these shitbags operate, that's essentially what they want to do with everyone who disagrees with them is subject them to a struggle session. Yeah, like, uh, for example, <laughs> the other day, um, someone I was following or saw somewhere, I think it was Ann Coulter was coming to speak at their uh, university or something. And Ann Coulter is a fucking dumb motherfucker that I despise. But... The thing I saw was, oh, hey, let's get this petition signed so that Ann Coulter can't speak on campus. And I was just like, no, like, let them spout their nonsense bullshit. Yeah. And then just let them dig their own grave type thing. Like, I mean, sure, the people that are going to the to the conference or whatever are going to majority be in line with Ann Coulter and agree with what she's saying. But there's going to be those there that are protesting. Like, yes, you can go there and protest and, like, rebuttal, like, with other people. Have conversation with other people that are there that don't see your point of view and try and get them to see your point of view. But don't yeah. don't silence refuse them. the, the don't try to silence person. Them. Yeah, don't. Yeah, exactly. Don't silence them. Don't yeah. not let them. Well, I think, oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I like I, I, I'm so for free speech unless unless they're not saying what I'm saying. Well, it's not, it's not that. It's so much. I think the point Garrett's making is, like, if you wanted to see her look ridiculous, if you wanted to really make her look ridiculous, right, you would show up to her thing and you would ask her some question that she couldn't answer, or you would debate her in a way where you bested her with uh, logic and facts and made her look ridiculous. But you, sh you trying to get her shut down or showing up and blowing on a fucking horn and snapping your fingers and shouting s slogans makes you look like a fucking yeah it just gives it just gives your enemies more ammunition against you saying oh look they won't let us talk now no, and yeah like, but like uh, i'm sure if someone they agreed with if they were coming to the university well of course and, and, yeah, that, and, and yeah people, that, that's not people, the point really. no, and people were protesting against them showing up they'd be like oh they're just against freedom of speech and they're just ignorant fuckers but it's not ignorant when you do it is it yeah but i mean that's the that's hypocrisy and everyone commits hypocrisy in some yeah form or you know fashion, that's but... that's that's totally fair because everyone's a hypocrite in some form and sense everyone is yeah it's like the racist but... thing we're <laughs> it's, we're all a little yeah, bit of everything we're all on a spectrum of racism and hypocrisy and sexuality so we're let's... all a little bit gay right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's, let's talk about... Giving head and suckling testicle sacks. Let's, let's talk about someone who uh, kind of seemed like he was going to be just a great human being and really throw us into the future. But, yeah, but like, there's lately, been lots of these... Lately, uh, what's, let's, what's going on with him, Garrett? What are you uh, well, I mean, so we're talking about Elon Musk, of course. And so there was, you know, the Thailand kids that were trapped in that cave for what, like 14 days nearly? They Thankfully, all of them escaped, and they only lost that one retired marine diver that died a hero, you know, yeah. helping to save these children. And um, Elon Musk was, I think, attempting to build a submersible vehicle of sorts to help the children escape. And um, one of the divers that was in charge of getting the children out said that it was nothing but a PR stunt and it would never have worked and everything like that. And Elon Musk basically 
tweeted er, it, i think the the diver also said like we never even asked for it which that's i think a contradictory statement i think elon musk was in contact with some people that were in charge saying hey yes even if they continue never, even if they never manufacturing asked, it even if they never asked for it like he still just wanted to help yeah but um anyway <laughs> One of the other people in charge is like, yeah, it's nothing but PR stunt. It never would have worked. Um, never even asked for it. And Elon Musk then tweeted out saying, sorry, pedo guy. You really did ask for it. Insinuating that the diver was a pedophile. Because whenever you're trying to insult someone, the worst insult you can come up with is pedophile. But like, I don't course. think it was so much that. It's the fact that he's a non Thai person who lives in Thailand, and that's oh like yeah, that, that is it. Uh, that was it right? Yeah, but like this diver had been in this cave, like I think for the past six years, he'd been like diving in this cave. So that's why he was there because he was very experienced in this specific fucking cave. And, right. Yeah. Well, also, I was gonna say I've heard conflicting things about this, but uh, I really don't know what's true or not because I haven't seen the whole chain on Twitter of comments or whatever it is, but. Uh, I heard some people claiming that the guy, like after Elon offered the shit, the, the, some people claim that the guy was rude first, that he told him to shove the sh sub up his ass. And that's when Elon like flipped on him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the guy in the interview said, oh, he can, sh he can uh, take the submarine and put it where, uh, where it hurts or something. I said, I think is what he said. So, yeah. I, I didn't come into this knowing really anything about it. I just been hearing that Elon Musk did some tweet. And, uh, yeah, I don't, is it really that bad then? Like if they were in an argument, they're in an argument and he insulted him. Yeah. But I guess, see, I don't know because Tesla shares actually did drop after this because. <laughs> yeah, but they'll come back. <laughs> yeah. They'll always come back. Like Elon Musk is generally He's uh, throwing a us positive the force in the stock market for Tesla. Like yeah. generally in the long run. Elon Musk is probably going to get you more than he's going to lose you. Do, do, do you think he's going to get kicked off the board like someone else this week? <laughs> um, yeah. Absolutely not. I, well, I highly doubt that Elon will get removed from Tesla or the boring company or anything like that. I think a lot of creative people are like socially stupid. Yeah, that's what we were talking about yesterday. And... That a lot of these eccentric geniuses are, yeah, eccentric weirdos. Yeah, there's. I mean, I've also even heard that like because Elon Musk doesn't like the sound of beeping or the color yellow, in a lot of his like Tesla um, factories, there's not a lot of safety. Like there's like the bare minimum safety precautions because like they'll have the forklifts beeping. running, not beeping, <laughs> and like they they won't have like caution lines, and like there've actually been like serious injuries at Tesla uh, factories. Well, so I like. Put them because in, he's this, how often does he go to a fucking factory? I don't know, but I, I remember hearing even once, like, they did a report on, uh, an employee came out and said, yeah, whenever Elon came, we had to turn all the forklifts on silent because he doesn't like the beeping. <laughs> yeah, and, see, like, he's just a wacko weirdo, but he's... Yeah, it's like his genius. eccentricism is getting people hurt and injured, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a little fucked up. So let's uh let's talk about this other CEO. What happened, Garrett? Good old uh, uh Papa John. He uh he said the N-word. We already talked about this on one of our uh We did let's plays. But this but... this gets more uh, traffic our uh, podcast. Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Papa John apparently quote like Papa John th Shatner. This is the stupidest thing. He was forced to say the N word in a conference call. <laughs> Yeah, what was it? Someone posted a meme today yeah, in our chat. I'm bringing it up. Where, yeah, it says, okay, yeah, Mike will post this in the uh, comments. Oh, Link shit. it, Mike. I'll Maybe. Try. I'll try. We, it's all, it, it might be linked in the comments. It might be. Oh, but anyway, it's just a picture of Papa John with the uh, caption from the New York Post saying, Papa John says he was pressured to use the N-word during conference call, and above it is the text, other execs punching Papa John telling him to say the n-word <laughs> and papa john's just like fuck you asshole like fighting him off like i'm not gonna say it and the other execs are just like beating him up and like Th throwing throws shit a around chair saying, at the wall say it say the word <laughs> and it's just like 
how do you get pressured into a situation to yeah, say like, that? Yeah, like, do they pull out a gun? And they're like, yeah. say the N-word. Oh. I, yeah. I don't know. I'd really like to... I know we'll never get to hear it because it probably wasn't recorded, but uh, it would be interesting to hear the context of the... Uh, whole like conversation how he's claiming he was forced to say it i think if you, if you do look him at trying to cover his ass well if yeah. you obviously but uh if you do look at um what he supposedly said it wasn't like he called anybody that yeah he didn't call anyone an n-word he said uh colonel sanders called that or said n-word all the time and never gotten any public media backlash from it but like something about like i don't know maybe they're pissed because there's no proof of colonel sanders saying that i don't know <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah big sanders chicken lived... big chickens getting after uh, papa john uh, and also colonel sanders died in 1980 so yeah like he, he, yeah. colonel sanders can, yeah he was saying this in like a fucking savage time and mankind well i would i wouldn't go that far but well, uh i'm just saying uh things were a lot shittier for uh colored people back then yeah so yeah colonel sanders saying that yeah probably everyone laughed and it was like <laughs> yeah but this day and age it's <laughs> like it's like no that's not fucking cool you shouldn't have been saying that okay so yeah okay you just remind me of something watching uh sasha baron cohen's who is america today yeah, I he was talking to some Republican leader, and they got on the topic of like sex somehow or something, and the Republican is like, "Yeah, it's not rape if it's your wife," and he laughs, and I'm just like, Ugh. "What?" Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, what not tonight, the tonight, fuck? not tonight, honey. I'm really not in the mood. Can, well, what are you like, doing? Stop. Like, can I yeah. just say I never found that guy funny? Sasha? I watched. Yeah, I watched he's Borat. Cringy. I don't think he's funny. He's super cringy. I watched Borat, and it was like an anti-comedy for me. Like, I didn't uh, laugh yeah. once. It has yeah. its moments. Yeah, people like Mike would love it just for the cringe. Uh, uh, so something, uh, the, you said rape. Uh, so another thing I kind of want to talk about with the, the cringe comps, and I'm sure you guys have seen this clip. Uh, I don't know the woman's name, but she she got big. She goes around to protests and she'll interview like feminists and stuff. I'm sure you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Lauren Southern, uh, right? I think so. The blonde chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's at a she's at a rape protest or something, and she's interviewing people and they're giving her their consent because they're being interviewed. So there's a clip of someone coming up to her and being like, "Oh, uh, these people said they don't want." they're taking back their consent and she's like oh like you're not allowed you're not allowed that's not how it works like they they said they're they, they said they were like we were allowed to record them and they're like well they're saying they're taking it back and they're like well that's not how it works and then she's like oh like the the chick is like well isn't that funny because like where we're at we're like we're at rape and uh you're trying to take away their consent or whatever so the woman's just like oh so like you know you go home with a guy you have sex with him, and then you regret it, and then you accuse him as being a rapist. Is that how this fucking works? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like that was well, that so is, good. That is that that is how it works. They are that crazy, though. That's actually that's what I'm taught. saying, and that's what she's throwing in taught. the face is how they're yeah. being fucking ridiculous. No, that's actually taught in universities now. That's like our tax dollars now teach for people to get taught <laughs> that if. A woman agrees to have sex with someone and then decides she regrets it five years later. That means that guy retroactively raped her. <laughs> They're actually that fucking crazy. I, I don't want to go I mean, into huge detail about it, but like a similar thing kind of like that happened to me in high school where, oh, she regretted it later, went back to her old boyfriend, and then, oh, it was, well, oh, Mike, uh, you know, he forced himself or whatever. And it was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I know people that, that have had that happen to them, too. It's yeah. like, yes, we consented. Oh, no, he raped me. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's sad because it, like, lessens what rape really is. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that, that, yeah, there you go. That's the, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, rape is a horrible, you awful act. hit the nail on and, the head. Falsely like whenever people, accusing. Yes, it yeah, falsely does accusing is just away from the actual fucking victims yeah right that's why um 
that's why this there's this sexual assault organization called Rain, and they're one of the older ones. Like they've been around since since I think the eighties. Oh, I and, you see. Know, they, uh, all that today. Sorry, go ahead. So they, you know, they're like they help victims of rape, and I think they like fund women's shelters and stuff like that. And when all this crazy stuff started coming out, they were actually one of the first to uh, to really be against it. Because they're like, look, this idea that you guys are trying to push that, like, every man is a potential rapist and we're going to somehow solve rape by having, like, rape seminars is on campuses is bullshit because nobody who's going to rape somebody is going to show up at, at, a, at a fucking seminar and go, hmm, wow, now I know that holding someone down and forcing them on themselves is wrong. Thank you for enlightening me. Yeah. And... The whole idea is just, and they also point out the fact that, like most most rapists, you're like you're you're never really going to find a rapist that only rapes somebody once. Like that does happen, but it's very rare. Most of them are dedicated predators. They're actually a, like psychopaths, right? And it's a very very small percentage of the male population that is a rapist. But those that small percentage is responsible for something like 90% of rapes because they just keep fucking doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, all cops are racist and all men are rapists. Pig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I don't, I, where do we go from here? I'm Mike? getting, I'm getting all twisted around, man. This, 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 well, this we have to like, we heating me like, up. We have to, <laughs> We've we've got to we've got to somehow find a way to fill the media and academia with reasonable level-headed people again, because these people that are running it now, like the inmates, are running the asylum. They're yeah. fucking insane. They they're are. they're literally insane. It's pretty. It's terrifying it, when you think about it's it. It's just like it's getting worse and worse. Their like ideals and stuff. Because I think like it's like oh like people aren't paying an, a, as much attention to us as they were. So now we have to be more radical. We got to go even lefter to the point that, yeah, know, like, well, uh, fortunately though, every, every extreme movement, movement like that carries within itself the seeds of its own destruction because the next generation always views whatever the previous generation was all about as being lame. And you'll find that repeated again and again throughout history. So it it will collapse. It will I, reach a point where it's no longer the zeitgeist or whatever they fucking call it these days. I also think that a lot of these extreme movements are the, it's not a majority of the population, because in my opinion, like all, the majority of the population like could give a fuck less. So they're not talking about it. They're not the ones like fighting against it because they're like it'll die off. Like you, Eric, you're thinking, yeah, it'll die off eventually, and it will, because yeah. it is a it's minority of people that have fucking megaphones and are screaming and yelling about it. And yeah. the majority of the population is just sitting over here on their fucking couch watching something else. Yeah. Waiting for it to die. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, again, it's it's a small group of people that are just really fucking loud. Can I make a can I make a neon oh never mind. I was gonna say I need to make a neon nightcast first. I have to go grab my pack of cigarettes, but I didn't realize they were right next to me. <laughs> so let's 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 uh eric uh you brought something up uh, i don't know what this is at all but the joel davis well podcast? i just wanted to mention it because like i was gonna say like oh it seems like like people are more concerned with alan musk calling someone a pedo than this actual pedo getting busted but uh i mean i guess alan musk is pretty famous so that that's why yeah, but yeah. anyways this guy named joel davis who's like a relatively young guy i think he's only like 22 23 and he started this big uh, anti-rape organization. And I think it even specifically was referring to, like, being, like, against child rape. And, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, he even got nominated for a Nobel Prize, apparently, at, like, age 20. And he was uh, involved with, like, things to do with a Democratic Party at a local level and all this shit. And... You know, a lot of people, I guess, viewed him as, like, an upstanding person and blah, blah, blah. So, anyways, he got busted because he was, like, soliciting an FBI agent to rape a two-year-old. 
Jesus. Yeah, so it's fucking wait. disgusting. <sighs> and the, the fact fuck? that he had access to, like, children because he was part of this organization that was supposed to help them. It's so disgusting. he was using it as a way to get into it. Oh, probably. Yeah, probably. absolutely, probably. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Of some of the teachers, they probably yeah, take that job to do that because they get close to them. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like again, it's like obviously. I mean, it should go without saying. Not everybody who like wants to work with children is like that, but people who are like that, yeah, a lot of them probably will try to seek out some kind of line of work that brings them into contact with children. Jared from Subway try to use his fucking quote unquote celebrity to yeah. get close to kids. Yeah. I just uh, I, I love that. Hey, I'm the guy from the Subway commercials. You want to suck my dick? Yeah, well, I mean that's the age we live in now where fucking anybody can be famous for the most ridiculous reasons. But I mean I guess it's always kind of been like that. I mean, I'll never forget the where's the beef lady. <laughs> yeah. Where's the beef? <laughs> yeah. This story was actually covered on the Philip DeFranco show, I think, a couple weeks ago. And yeah, I think he actually had some text messages that the guy sent. I can't find him right now. It was pretty looking. vile shit. It was disgusting. Jesus. It's like, because he was talking about like three and four year olds, like maybe sometimes even younger, and about like penetrating them. It was awful to like hear. Yeah, he's fucked. I don't even want to spend too much yeah, time. Yeah, I don't. It I don't. That doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> but uh, really but yeah, this you guys... podcast isn't made to make you feel good. I know it's just I feel don't... good. <laughs> but did you guys know that the uh, Where's the Beef lady was the special guest timekeeper at WrestleMania too? <laughs> what? Christ. <laughs> That's a little info. That's fucking weird, dude. She was that yeah. popular, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's. And talk. you know they fired her. They fired her because um, okay, she was the spokesperson for Wendy's. Garrett probably doesn't know. Um, I, I know who the fucking who's the. I know. I don't know who she is, but I know what. Where's the beef at? Yeah. yeah so some old lady for the viewers who don't know who was in these Wendy's commercials, and she would look at like a burger from a competitor and be like, "Where's the beef?" Implying that you know, like Wendy's had like bigger burgers and shit. Um, so she somehow became like, I guess the term we would use now would be viral. Uh, she became like really popular and where's the beef was like a catchphrase. And even at a presidential debate in the eighties, there was like Walter Mondale said to like Gary Hart in reference to his campaign promises, where's the beef. But anyways, uh, she got fired. Um, because she made, did a commercial for a uh, spaghetti sauce that came with beef in it. And she was like, I finally found the beef. And Wendy's was like, oh, no, 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 no. The beef is here, sweetheart. And then they fired her. <laughs> <laughs> Calling her sweetheart. That's, That's pretty fucking sexist. And well, I just made that up. Hey, oh, Eric so is, a, is a down southern boy. And we say sweetheart and darling all the time down here. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So you ever notice how sometimes people can call you like sweetheart or sweetie, but it's like condescending in a way? Yeah, um, um, yeah it's, I was get whenever, it's like whenever I walk into a Waffle House, they're like, take a seat anywhere, darling. I'm like, it's just, it's just normal. I actually don't have a reaction to it because it's fucking No, normal. I know, but I'm saying like in certain contexts, it can be like... What I'm thinking of is I was getting on a streetcar a couple years ago, and like here in, in when you get on like when you pay with a token or whatever, they give you a paper transfer. So if you're switching between like a bus and a streetcar, you can prove that you paid or whatever. Yeah. But nobody uh, nobody really uses those. Like nobody really pays attention to that. But I guess at certain times they crack down on it because <laughs> like I got on the streetcar, I paid with the token, and the woman like tries to hand me like a, t a transfer, and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want it. And she's just like, no, sweetie, you need it. And it just sounded like really like condescending, you know what I mean? I guess. She, she wanted to make sure you didn't get like maybe she's actually like required to give you it for one, and maybe she like sincerely thought she's like, they're coming today, they're coming to check on these there today. You, you need. I this. guess it was more the tone of it than what she said, but uh, so yeah. Let, let's let's talk about um, where is it written? The this Mexican grandpa. 
Oh, okay. Shit, I forgot about that one. Yeah, so a 92-year-old Mexican grandpa was out walking, and some black woman ran up and bashed his head in with a brick, basically. And the media went nuts for like a day until everybody realized that it wasn't a white person that did it, and then it got swept under the rug. Yeah, so what happened was she thought he was trying to, like, kidnap her child. A 91-year-old is going to physically take away your child. And, yeah, they were walking on a sidewalk. She's probably crazy. She's a psycho. Yeah, probably. But, yeah, they walk on a sidewalk. I think this is New Mexico or something. Uh, No, it was in Los Angeles. Um, And, yeah, walking on a sidewalk, he passes by her and her kid. You know, he makes room around and goes around. And she just starts beating him with her fists and, I guess, finds a, a concrete block and starts beating him with that. So she's, yeah. she's she's a psychopath. Uh, she has snapped, yeah. and uh, she needs to be put in jail. Yeah, I think she she got charged for attempted murder. Good. Oh, yeah, so the guy absolutely. didn't die. Oh, uh, he did not. He's still alive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, good, good. He he got he went to the hospital. Um, he had a broken jaw, broken cheek, and two broken ribs. Jesus. Because Fuck. she on top of beating her, she recruited some guys that were just standing around to come and kick him. Oh, they're clearly upstanding citizens. Yeah, yeah like, because oh, hey, this guy's trying to take my kid. Come beat him. I would. Like, I, I, he's fucking ninety-one. He's ninety-one, and you already got a brick on him. Like, yeah, like chill. He's 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 sedated. He's he's captured. Like, let's call the police. Yeah. Let's oh, sort and, uh, this out. A reason it got a lot of big news was because she was just kept saying, "Go back to your country. Go back to Mexico." That's a, maybe she uh, maybe she just watched Death Wish and thought she was Charles Bronson or something. I don't know. Uh, it sounds it sounds to me like she uh, she's a little bit of a racist. Oh, she is a racist. Right, but Eric said black people can't be racist. Oh wow! Wait, so what happened? Yeah, I'm rethinking my whole thing. Now. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. It's like maybe we're. All I mean, you know what? I bet you racist. guys. I bet you guys some white person forced her to say that. Ah, Papa John That's did. Probably. Papa, Papa John, John was so upset her. at getting fired. That's why that... he said the N-word. He was talking to this lady. Oh, there we like, go. They were having a conversation, and he thought it was okay because they were friends. Yeah. yeah. God damn. We connected guys, all the dots. We are they figuring did, they out did like everything the hands, tonight. They did like the hand slap fist bump things. We thought it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was in with, with that crowd. She said it was okay. So, because you know, whenever a black person tells you it's okay to say it, you can totally say it all the time, whenever, wherever. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I have. I think he's joking. I, I, I have friends, and I, I never say it. I, I don't know. Yeah, there was this guy I used to work at or work with, and he's like, oh, yeah, dude, you can say it. Like, I don't care. And I'm just like, mm. I don't know. Ah. I'm good. Thanks, yeah, though. I don't have that. I don't... <laughs> that free pass means nothing to me, dude. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to use it. it I'm not nothing. cashing that in, dude. I still don't feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't All know. Right. The, uh, we're, the world's a fucking weird place, eh? I, it's... It's, uh, it's not good. Well, it is. It's getting progressively better. You always say the world's getting worse and blah, blah, blah. The world's shitty, but it is progressively getting better. It is is funny that that you bring that up because I remember reading something where it was talking about how um, like the percentage of people in the world that live in what they call absolute poverty, which I think is defined as living on like less than $5 a day or something like that, or maybe it's even less than a dollar a day or something ridiculous, but... Anyways, that number is like half of what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Money's getting around, not as quickly as it should. I, but, you know, because again, like whenever you hear people starving in like Africa and stuff, it's not a problem of food. Like we have plenty of fucking food to go around. It's just a problem of there's no roads and the roads that do exist are muddy and hard to traverse. Like, it's just hard to get food there. You know, people always talk a lot of doom and gloom about food supplies, but uh, there have been a lot of developments in uh, in recent years about how um, basically the thing we're going to have to start doing is growing up. Yeah. By like which I mean buildings making buildings on yeah, which there are yeah. farms. And 
Yeah, there are a lot of farmings that you can even do in your house with, like, water-based stuff, with fish and stuff. Like Yeah. Um, I remember reading one thing about how... We're, we're, uh, we're getting there, too. Like, um, like and there's just little things, too. Like, um, they used to never grow watermelons in Ontario, where me and Mike live, because it's, it's, there's not a long, long enough growing season to produce watermelons. But then people figured out that if you put a layer of black plastic, just like garbage bag material, over the fucking soil, and then like poke holes in it and and plant the seeds there, that black plastic catches enough sunlight and raises the soil temperature enough that they can now grow watermelons in Ontario. Yeah, like uh, my grandma had a farm that her and my grandpa worked on for like most of their lives, and yeah, she had like a small garden out there on top of all the crops that they grew, and yeah, she would have like <laughs> I remember. She'd have like yeah, little black trash bags that kept it warm. Yeah. Uh, so that you know they would actually continue growing. Although we live in fucking Texas, like there's plenty of fucking hot season here. But yeah, I guess some things I guess need to grow a little bit longer. But and you do really like you can get like a surprising amount of like obviously not to the point of selling it, but for like your individual family consumption, you can get quite a bit of food out of a relatively small garden. Yeah, yeah, no, there's like, a, there's a, there's a big movement of uh, turning your front lawn or your backyard into a garden because it's why not see, have essentially free food in the U.S. Lawns are like the biggest fucking thing in the world. It's like, oh yeah, I've got a nice green lawn. I got a lawn, and that's that's, that's the thing yeah, they're, trying to, they're trying to get rid of. You know, yeah, that, like I know in uh, a lot of places that where water is scarce they're like yeah do you need a green lawn maybe you should uh you know have some native plant life maybe have a desert lawn if you live in fucking arizona yeah so yeah well uh i guess we're kind of out of time right i think we got time for the last story okay kendall jenner or kylie Mm, jenner no what oh you don't want to talk about kylie becoming the world's youngest billionaire uh, she's becoming the world's youngest billionaire. Uh, that's it. Uh, I have something else, though. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Uh, there's a new uh, TV show, apparently, called... It's a game show. You yeah. know, game shows, you, you go on there, you, you compete, you win money. Yeah. This one pays off student debts. That's funny. <laughs> Can like, I go on it? <laughs> it's not funny. It's fucking sad. That is sad. It's depressing as shit that, kid, like my generation isn't going on you know game shows to win money it's to get rid of debt yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 you know, back in the 60s it was like they were they were uh they were going on game shows to like buy a cottage or you know buy yeah. another car <laughs> exactly it's like oh this is just uh, for a nest egg you know whenever yeah. we need it but uh the guy that created it or the guy that's sorry the hosting it, i don't know if he actually created it um He's hosting it, and I think generally the people that created the show are doing it kind of out of good intentions because, I mean, getting rid of student debt is nice, and uh, throughout the show they also are talking about, hey, you know, maybe uh, we should do something about the massive student debt. It's like I think other than medical expenses, the number one cost of bank uh, cause of bankruptcy in the U.S. or something like that. Student loans. Yeah, student loans, man. I don't Fucking... even I don't even have a lot of student loans, but the ones I do, it's like it's a struggle. It sucks. Anyone miss the old prices, right? The can of corn costs fifty seven cents. Now it's fucking ninety nine cents. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> uh I think what we learned from today is that we're all trying to be good people. But we're all. I don't. Don't. We're all. We're all. Don't ruin it with a cheesy line. We're all hypocritical, <sighs> kind of racists, and a little uh, bit gay. Everyone's a little bit gay. We're all human. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mouth noises. Anyways, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Um. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you think about any of these stories. Yeah, what, 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 um, let us know what you give think. us your opinion. We also would have accepted. Tell me what you think of me. Okay. Well, Adios. We'll, <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>